science journalist Leila Nelipour is investigating a remote Panamanian archipelago to unravel an extraordinary engineering mystery. <laughs> a secret that is only revealed twice a day. So we're on a beach on San Telmo Island. And when the tide is high, there's nothing really to see. But once the tide goes low, amazing wreck. For nearly 150 years, this wreck was a total mystery. But a clue can be found in the very name of the archipelago, the Pearl Islands. By the mid-1800s, oyster numbers here were dwindling, and pearl hunters could no longer access them by free diving. So, in 1863, American engineer Julius Kroll dove deep and developed something audacious, a hand-powered submarine. This mysterious wreck is what remains of it. What's so special about this submarine is that it used a water ballast system to submerge. And it was actually the most sophisticated system of its time. <laughs> Pressurized with air pumped into it from a ship above, Julius Kroll pioneered a system of flooding and blowing water ballast tanks that allowed this underwater vessel to go even deeper. The way the people inside the submarine fetch the pearls is that since the submarine was completely pressurized, it was able to go to the bottom of the ocean, and then it had a hatch at the bottom of the structure that they could just open, and the water wouldn't come in. So they could just reach out to the bottom of the sea and fetch all the oysters. So how did the water ballast tanks inside Kroll's submarine work? So this is the principle of the submarine explorer. We have a tank here, and as we fill it with water, it will sink to the bottom. So when they wanted to bring the submarine back up to the surface, they used a the compressed air tank. And they pumped compressed air into the water tank to push all the water out. So now I've blown air into the tank full of water. Some of the water has come up, and it has allowed the tank to come back up to the surface. What was so innovative about this water ballast system is that the submarine actually had the tanks placed in different parts of its structure. So it allowed it to control if it wanted to go down nose first or tail first, and also allowed it to control the trim of the submarine as it was descending. This was still a very technologically advanced piece of engineering, and it's amazing to be able to see it and feel it and touch it, something that has been with us for over 150 years. <laughs> 